because I don't want to be running around naked. I think we'll use Froggy on Why not? And we're going to go through the how to prepare for a quest. Oh, just a note. I'll go back. There are two different types of guild halls. Uh, the first is the offline guild hall, which lets you bring two cats with you on a quest. The second will take you to the online guild hall, and you'll still be able to bring one cat. And if you're only grouped with one other hunter, both of you will bring your cats with you on the quest. So that way you'll still have a full group. Uh, but if you have three or more hunters, there will be no cats available. Okay. Uh, before we get started here, there was one menu option that I kind of glossed over, and that is the introduction of the guild card. So we'll go here. By choosing the bottom option in town, we'll access the guild card menu. Now, the first choice just references the guild card as you have it set up. You can see here, this is just my main, main screen. Uh, you can see my weapon usage percentage, uh, any sort of history I have recently. Any sort of, I think this is the love my cats have for me. Uh, any awards I have, you can see here, my time for Monster Hunter Portable, or Monster Hunter Portable 2nd G was 318 hours. Of course, I had a lot more time on Unite as well. Uh, these, the sixth page is your monster record. And then finally, your seventh page is any sort of training, uh, training hall quests, uh, the sort of records you have there. Okay, the second option will change your title. So you can change various things here. I really have no idea <laughs> what that means. Uh, the second, you can add in a personal message. I already have a message here. It's my YouTube channel. It says, good luck. And then the third and fourth choices, this will change your design and your pose. So the top one will change your pose. Uh, all very dynamic. <laughs> kind of like that one. we we'll use that one for now. And then the second one will change the background. See if we can find something else agreeable. Some little orange leaves. Let's see what else. The third choice will bring up the option to send your guild card to other people. And you're only going to be able to do that online. So access the third choice. I believe the first choice will send your guild card to one person and the second choice will highlight you'll be able to send it up to everybody that's available in the guild hall finally the fourth choice in the guild card menu is like a reference for all the cards you've already collected uh, you can see here uh, various statistics let's see okay you have the number of the card on the left followed by the name of the person followed by a title that you can change by pressing circle like, I can put a heart on this person here. It was sweet. I think this was a Japanese player. Uh, followed by their sh friendship level, followed by the date. Uh, I guess I'd let my battery expire and my date was standard. And I should have changed it, but I didn't. Oh, well. Uh, circle, or wait, wait, what is it? Circle will let you analyze their card. So we'll see uh, sweet was still Hunter Rake 0. Let's see somebody that was more most recent. Uh, maybe Ray. Ray was 1. Do I have anyone that's Hunter Rake 3? Everybody, oh, here's a Hunter Rake 2. So Dulce was Hunter Rake 2. You're doing pretty good. And you can see all the same things that you have under his card as well. Okay, and finally, if you somebody super pounded you one too many times, you can press select, and this will give you the option to delete it. The left option is yes, the second option is no. Uh, you can have up to 12 pages of guild cards, so what is that? 100 and... Well, 8 times 12, eight, 96 cards about. So once you run up to about 96, you can start deleting cards. Otherwise, just keep them there. Because the more friendship level you have, the better things you'll get from them. Okay. So beyond that, um, the guild hall is the place you're going to want to go to before you start any quest. And that's because you have the hot spring here. Uh, so long as your hot spring has been upgraded, and I'll get to that in just a moment, as soon as you sit in it and you get out, you will get a upgrade. And you'll see in the bottom right, uh, the top number refers to the upgrade you'll get for your life, and the bottom upgrade refers to the upgrade you'll get to your stamina. And then, of course, if you're bored, you can just do various things when you're in the hot tub as well, which is like drop a bunch of toys around, or I think you can do a, sing a little song every time. We're going to put the kibosh on that. <laughs> uh, I like how both my cats are green. It's cute. 
Uh, and then finally, there's a there's another upgrade you can do, and that's available by talking to this cat. Now you get these by upgrading your your drink menu as well, but I'm not really sure what any of them does in particular. I haven't done any upgrades yet, or I haven't done any translations of this. But as so long as you drink one, uh, you should get some various feline skill abilities uh, that will help you more than they'll hurt you. <laughs> so you've got extra money around, feel free to do that. And the way that you upgrade your hot spring and the way that you upgrade your drink menu is by talking to this guy here. Now the top menu refers to hot spring upgrades. So definitely complete these as soon as you can, I believe. You probably have these first three quests right away. Uh, kill five Bulfongo, uh, kill a great Jaggy, and kill a Royal Ludroth. And then as time goes on, you get uh, kill two great Baggies, and kill a Froggy, and I don't know what that guy's called. Tongue guy. <laughs> And once you've done all those, you'll be up to 140 life and 125 stamina. And when you're online, the player with the most upgraded hot spring uh, has the uh, upgrade uh, count towards all the other players as well. So it certainly is worth it to go ahead and do that as soon as possible. And then, of course, the second option up, uh, unlocks better drinks. Uh, I've yet to clear all these yet because I don't really know what they do. <laughs> but uh, I'll probably get around to them probably tonight. And then, uh, finally, in terms of actually starting quests, let's start here. Uh, of course, you can accept your quest from him if you want. And you'll see it's blue. That means a bath quest. And talk to him again, you can cancel it. And then the ladies at the guild counter, the lady on the left does low rank quests. The lady on the right does high rank quests. Now, just talking to her, you'll see here, uh, starting off for the first time, all the Hunter Rank 1 quests will be available. Uh, in order to get to Hunter Rank 2 to have the Urgent Unlock, you need to kill the Great Jaggy. Bear off, Royal Ludroth, Froggy, and Kuropeko, and Eroshira. And I believe that's it. And otherwise, as soon as you do that, you'll get an Urgent, and then you can start Hunter Rank 2. Likewise, you do a bunch of quests in Hunter Rank 2, and you go into Hunter Rank 3, and a bunch of quests in Hunter Rank 3. Finally, Hunter Rank 4, and I think that's high rank. Uh, otherwise, if you go to Download Play, you can download quests. That's what this little thing is right here. There's only been two quests released so far. So have to wait a little bit while it's accessed. You can see uh, kill 20 Bulfongo or kill this little gauntlet in the arena. I already did that one. It was pretty fun. Okay, and then finally, uh, if you're not playing online, you're playing by yourself. Oh, by the way, there are guys here. You can talk to them and they'll give you things. This guy always gives me a smoke bomb, I think. Oh, that's a life powder. It's pretty good. Uh, if you're playing offline, you're not playing online. Uh, you're going to want to do a lot of the offline quests first. And the woman that gives you them is the village elder. Although, again, she does not look very old, so I feel bad calling her that. But in any case, uh, oh, I've done a lot of them. You see, I've cleared, cleared just about everything. Uh, as you go through these quests, uh, different urgent quests will be popped up, and again, you'll go through the story as in, you know, as it goes along. And just accept the quest, and you run over to the right, and you start your quest right here. And of course, if you want to be more powerful, Again, doing those hot spring quests and uh, taking a bath first before you start will allow you to keep that upgrade for when you actually start the quest out in the field. Oh, and of course, if you're having difficulty figuring out what the objectives are for the quests, you can always check the Mind Guard forums. They have a great fact up for all the different quests, both for the village and for the guild. So definitely go through that. And let's see. Oh, that seems like that's the end of this walkthrough. Um, the, oh, the one last thing that I may not have mentioned is in the guild hall. Uh, once a quest has been posted and you're online, like let's say I accept a quest. Let's do that right now. If mine is white, then you see a, a white tab like that next to my name. You have to go to this spot right here, and that's where you go to accept the quest. And once you've accepted it, you have to stand by this door and press square, and that mean, means you'll ready up. And so that means when the other player, the, the player that started the quest wants to start it, he can start it and you'll accompany him with you. Uh, otherwise, you'll have to stay back in town and wait for him to come back. Okay, so that's been uh, quite a tutorial. Uh, I hope it's been fairly helpful to all of you. Uh, I think even if you were getting through fairly well, you may have learned a thing or two along the way. Uh, in either case, uh, I hope you